please be seated. Thank you all very much for your patience. Good morning to all of you. For the record, State of Ohio versus Tracy Hunter, case number B1400110. This matter is on the docket today solely for the execution of the sentence imposed by my predecessor, Judge Nadel, on December 5th, 2014, for a jury conviction uh, against Ms. Hunter on count six of the indictment, having an unlawful interest in a public contract, a felony of the fourth degree. A judgment entry imposing that sentence is signed by Judge Nadel and is part of the record. Mr. Singleton, Ms. Branch, you represent uh, Ms. Hunter, is that correct? That's correct, Your Honor. Good morning. Yes, sir. Thank you. And Mr. Crosswell, you're here on behalf of the state, is that correct? I am, Your Honor. All right, thank you. Thank you all for being here. I will point out, is most people here know this is not a sentencing hearing. It is not a resentencing hearing. The sentence has already been imposed by Judge Nadel on December 5th, 2014. My job is solely to follow the law, abide by the rule of law, and execute the imposed sentence. Uh, but before we get to that, there are two things. First of all, I have in my hand a letter, uh, which I've not shared with counsel because obviously everything needs to be on the record. Uh, it was hand delivered to me moments ago uh, from the Hamilton County Prosecutor, uh, Joe Dieters. I will read it for the record. Dear Honorable Patrick Dinkelacher, you and I have known each other professionally and personally for almost 40 years. Today you are going to impose the sentence Judge Norbert Nadel gave former Judge Tracy Hunter after she was indicted by a grand jury, convicted by a pettit jury, and upheld by every court in Ohio. It was also reviewed by the Federal District Court and the Sixth Circuit Court of Appeals and upheld. She has not once shown remorse. She has been incredibly disrespectful to you and to the justice system. She has in the face, <clears throat> she has in the, face the fact that my office removed itself in any way from her prosecution, blamed us for her plight. That being said, I believe she has some type of mental condition that has created this scenario. Although we are not, please. Although we are not the prosecutors in this particular case, I ask as a friend of the court to consider an evaluation of her prior to imposing Judge Nadel's sentence. I have nothing but the greatest respect for you as a judge, and more importantly as a person. I know in my heart that you will do what you believe is just. I have known you too long to believe otherwise. But she has basically lost everything professionally. A re review of her stability to serve jail time hurts no one, and may in some way aid in your decision to impose the sentence signed by Joseph T. Dieters. Um, any comment on that, uh, Mr. Crosswell, first of all, sir? Uh, Your Honor, I would uh, endorse those uh, comments. Okay. Uh, thank you, sir. Mr. Singleton? Oh, yes, I want to be heard on this. Okay. Judge, I, I'm, I can't believe that, that Joe Dieters would ask for her to be evaluated. Um, in the letter, there's reference to her not showing remorse. Here's why there's not remorse. Well, well, she, first of all, Mr. Singleton, with all due respect, you, you can, I'll certainly give you a chance to say anything you'd like. I'm just talking about whether or not you believe this is something appropriate for me to do. No, okay. absolutely not. I appreciate that. Absolutely not. And, and, I, and if I could just say more, I'd like to. The reason I say absolutely not is, first of all, there, I mean, both Jennifer Branch and I have, have worked um, very closely with Judge Hunter. There is no issue whatsoever, not in the slightest, about her not being competent or understanding what's going on. Absolutely nothing. She has been um, very helpful to us as we have litigated her case up uh, to the Ohio Supreme Court and in, in federal habeas. Um, so that's, that's number one. Number two, with regard to the issue in uh, Prosecutor Dieter's letter about remorse, the reason why there's not remorse is because she didn't violate this statute. I know that there's a conviction. I understand what the courts have said about it. But under the plain language of this statute, she is not guilty of securing the authorization of employment, period. And we plan to file a motion to dismiss. Um, I would ask the court 
not to impose sentence today to give us a chance to do that. Um, I would ask alternatively that the court not grant, not impose or execute the sentence today because we are still in, uh, on appeal of the habeas denial in federal court. And we would ask the court to, to stay execution of sentence until we finally resolve that issue. This case, is, you know, as you know, has been pending for quite some time, and Judge Hunter has been out the entire uh, time that the appeals have run and the habeas has run. And, and let me just say a word about, about, about what she's gone through, because I think that gets lost sight of. Every day, for the past five years almost, Judge Hunter has gotten up each morning not knowing whether that was going to be the day that she was going to have to go to jail. I know by talking with her, by observing her, the impact that that has had on her life. We believe it would be profoundly unjust and unfair and a waste of taxpayer dollars to incarcerate her for one minute in the jail. We believe it would be profoundly unfair and unjust and a waste of taxpayer resources to put her on probation. What we'd ask the court to do is just end this today, end this today, but not incarcerate her, particularly given that we're going to be filing this motion to dismiss. We'd ask the court for, for um, a continuance for us to be able to address that. Thank you, Your Honor. Thank you, Mr. Your Honor, if I might. I'm sorry, Ms. Crosso. Ms. Francis, do you want to say anything in regards to Mr. Dieter's letter? Uh, Your Honor, everything that Mr. Singleton just said is true. Uh, Tracy Hunter does not have any mental condition, does not need an evaluation. I, I appreciate that. Thank you. Mr. Crosswell? Your Honor, if I might. Um, Simply in response to, to the letter, uh, Mr. Singleton indicated that he did not believe, uh, or that he did believe that uh, uh, Ms. Hunter was uh, competent to stand trial. I would agree with that. I don't believe that Mr. Dieter's letter is speaking to the issue of whether she was competent to stand trial or whether she was uh, legally insane for purpose of, of the trial. No one has raised that issue and it's not even been considered. I believe that the letter that Mr. Dieters has written and that I, when, when you asked, endorsed uh, was a letter which asked to have an evaluation for the purpose of sentencing. And I would say that uh, that has nothing to do with the competency issue and it is rather, uh, it is not uncommon for the courts in trying to determine uh, an appropriate judgment to order a, uh, a, a pre-sentence investigation and to order, in addition to that, a, a clinic evaluation to determine if there are any services that are needed or if there are any issues that, uh, that present themselves. So that, uh, if, certainly it's up to the court, but that, the, that part of the letter that Mr. Dieters wrote is the part that, uh, that I endorse, and I think it was solely for the purpose of sentencing, not to question competency in this case. I appreciate that. And since the defense counsel has indicated that they do not wish for me to proceed in that manner, I will certainly not do that. I do appreciate the concerns uh, Mr. Dieter has, has extended, but that is something that we're not going to proceed with. The other thing I do need to do um, before we get to the, uh, the, the other aspect of this case is I thought about this for a long time. Uh, and on behalf of the justice system, uh, preservation of the independence of the uh, judiciary and the spirit of transparency and to comply with the dictates of Ohio Code of Judicial Conduct, I'm going to state the following. And in no way, shape, or form is this to be held in any way against Ms. Hunter. But I want to point out for the last several weeks, I have received at my home 
at my home, not here in the courthouse, at my home, 45 postcards from people, some of them signed, a few, some of them with return addresses, a few, but most of them anonymous. So when my wife got the mail, she looks at them, of course, she becomes concerned. I'm not going to read them all, obviously, but again, in complying with what I think is law, and so no other judge should go through what I've gone through with these Facebook postings by certain people and whatever, okay? I'm just going to put this couple of these on the record. Seven of them start off with, I am a registered voter, okay? What is that supposed to mean? Well, whatever. I'm a registered voter and I believe all charges should be dropped against Judge Tracy Hunter. I'm a registered voter who stand and support Judge Tracy Hunter. Drop all charges against Ms. Hunter and exonerate her now. Dear Judge Nicklock, please exonerate Judge Hunter of the charge she was falsely accused of. I'm a registered voter in Hamilton County. Judge Nicklock, exonerate Judge Hunter now. Drop all charges, restore her good name. I am a taxpayer and a registered voter. I'm a registered voter. Please let Tracy Hunter. She is innocent of all charges. As a concerned citizen and a registered voter, I urge you to exonerate Judge Tracy Hunter now. I'm a registered voter in Ohio. And I may, I'm asking that you release Tracy Hunter of all charges. Exonerate Judge Tracy Hunter now. Judge Dinkelocker, Judge Tracy Hunter needs to be exonerated now. Do not delay. Cincinnati needs her to be restored right away. Hello, Judge Dinkelocker. I'm asking you to exonerate the Honorable Tracy Hunter from all charges at this time. If you're not able to see that she has suffered enough, I don't understand the reasoning for the time that this issue is taken. You are crucify her for making laws fair for all. Exonerate Honorable Judge Tracy Hunter. Free Judge Tracy Hunter, would you like to be the judge that goes down in history trying to destroy someone who is doing the right thing who is elected to serve public, especially juvenile court, exonerate now. In the midst of this turmoil due to the injustice towards Judge Hunter, it is hoped that you who are so determined to jail her to exonerate this lady. The city is going to change according to the jail outcome. Dear sir, I do not know your religious preference, but just as the good Lord gave you a favor and spared your life as well as keeping you from incarceration when you killed that African-American woman on Central Parkway. Thank you very much. Uh, please do something with Judge Hunter. <clears throat> you are a fraud. Thank you for your time. Hamilton County taxpayer. Judge Dinkelocker, we demand you drop the charges of Judge Tracy Hunter. Do it now. Exonerate Judge Tracy Hunter now. Economic boycott of Cincinnati until a judge, judge Hunter is exonerated now. Judge Dinkelocker, bring back justice for Judge Tracy Hunter. Black judges matter. She made us as important, she made an important difference for our children. Exonerate her now. Dear Honorable Dinkelocker, remember you killed someone and your privilege got you off. No, I do. It's pain in my house, okay? See, well, you could make things right by taking your foot off the neck of former Judge Hunter, a holy woman. There are bogus claims, a bogus charge for which he is convicted. How is it you get zero jail time, no consequence for killing someone, and Pastor Hunter loses her good name and does jail time? God bless America, uh, Hamilton County taxpayer. And the last one I'll read. Honorable Judge Dinklocker, boy, that is used. Perhaps no one think, let's see. Perhaps do one good thing before you meet the maker in the sky. Since you are a killer, maybe doing something right for points will help your eternal judgment. Exonerate Pastor Hunter and former Judge Tracy Hunter. I know you will not, but you will not be able to tell your white Jesus that you were not asked. Sincerely, Cincinnati Taxpayer. Your Honor, could I just be heard very, very briefly no. on that? Having said that, I now refer to Rule 2.4 of the Ohio Code of Judicial Conduct, external influences on judicial conduct. A, a judge shall not be swayed by public clamor or fear of criticism. B, a judge shall not permit family, 
social, political, financial, or other interests or relationships to influences of the judge's conduct or judgment. And C, a judge shall not convey or permit others to convey the impression that any person or organization is in the position to influence the judge. Having said that, I, I say to the organizer that, that did that, and obviously it's organized because these are these will be made public record. Every one of them has a label addressed to Judge Dinkelocker at my house. The stamps are all the same. So somebody organized that for whatever reason. But I just hope no judge ever has to go through that. But be that as it may, um, we'll move on. Uh, I will point out that uh, I will say to the organizer and some of the people that wrote those postcards, um, I don't think some of them were very Christian, but that's the way it goes. Um, I will say to them, though, if the attempt was to intimidate me in any way, that has flat out failed. Okay? I will never, ever, ever bow to that type of pressure, veiled threats, vicious comments, lies about me or anything else. I've been a judge for 28 years, and for the, for, for the first time that I do something because somebody has threatened me or pressured me to do something, it's the last time I do it because I'll never be a judge. I don't want to be a judge anymore. I will not violate my oath. Having said that, I do need to point out that Pastor Peterson Mingo, Councilman Christopher Smitherman, the Black Lawyers Association, the uh, Southern Christian Leadership Conference, as signed by Edith Thrower, who I know is a very good person, and Mayor Cranley, have all written what I believe are appropriate letters to me that I have read, and I will attach what significance I can, but I wanted to put on the record that they did it appropriately and did send me letters which I have read. Uh, with that, then, we are now at the aspect of the execution of sentence. Again, they're not a hearing sentence, and I'm not even sure if it's, if it's necessary, but in the spirit of allowing everything to be done properly and, in, and uh, making sure the due process Ms. Hunter is taken care of, uh, Ms. Branch or Mr. Singleton, did you want to say anything at this point? Um, I do, Your Honor, and this perhaps might not be necessary, but I, the reason I popped up to respond as I was listening to those postcards was that um, um, I'm sorry that you had that happen at your home. All right, it's fine. It's fine. Tracy Hunter did not send those postcards. And I, and I think you I think when you said the organizer of it you probably made the point I was going to make, which is that there, you know, this case has been followed. Um, it's generated a lot of passion and interest in the community. And Judge Hunter can't control what other people do. And I just wanted to say that. And, I, and I'm really sorry about, about the impact that that's had on you. Um, I don't want to repeat too much of what I said before, but let me say this on execution of sentence. You know, we've asked for the time to file our motion to dismiss or to, and, and or to stay, um, which we would hope you would do. If you're not going to do that, then what we're asking you to do is not send her to jail and not put her on probation. Um, yes, this sentence was imposed by Judge Nadel, and you said earlier that your job today is to follow the law and execute the sentence. But that sentence is not just. Our belief, and you know, we'll continue to litigate this, and I realize that you're not in a position to agree with us on, on any of this, is that the conviction is unjust. But six months in the jail for a felony for, for someone who has never been in trouble before, and someone who has been a positive and is still a positive impact, has a positive impact on our community, that's not just. And I would ask you, Judge Dinkelocker, to rise above, and not to suggest that you're not rising above, but 
I know some, some, some folks have personally said things in those postcards that offended you. I would ask you to, to turn the other cheek on that. Not tar Tracy Hunter with it. And also do what's just today. I don't think there are too many people who in this community and including Joe Dieters. I mean, the letter was not saying send her to jail for six months. The letter was saying something else that we happen to disagree with. But I don't think there are too many people in this community on both sides of the aisle, in prosecutor offices, in defense uh, lawyers' offices, um, people on the street who believe that this sentence is right. Putting aside whether the conviction is right, which we contend it's not. So. I would ask you, on behalf of Tracy Hunter, to end this today for her. She has had, as a result of this case, she's lost everything, almost. There's something that's important that she has held on to, but she's lost a lot. She lost her job as a judge, her law license her ability to earn an income. She's lost peace of mind, as I said, not knowing when that day was going to come that she'd have to go to jail. That's a lot for one person to have on her shoulders. She's held on, though, to her character. And she has continued to serve the community through her pastoring, her church, ministering to her flock. She has an elderly mother who needs her. I would ask you to take that into consideration as you think about what is just here today. And so my request to you, Judge Dinkelocker, is not to execute the sentence that was imposed. Give us time to file our motion to dismiss. But in any event, please don't add to Tracy Hunter's burden, the burden that she's carried for these past five years. Thank you for listening. Thank you very much, Mr. Singleton. Ms. Branch, do you want to say anything now? Uh, nothing additional, Judge. Okay, thank you very much. Mr. Crosswell, anything, sir? Your Honor, uh, I came here today with the intention of uh, uh, saying nothing. Uh, but frankly, um, based upon the arguments that have been made, I think I would be uh, negligent in my duty and obligation uh, to the state and, frankly, to the court to not make the point that um, there, there are certain things that, uh, uh, as you know, I've uh, never prosecuted a case before. I have practiced criminal law for 45 years, and there are certain lessons, I believe, that I've learned in the practice of law. And one is, is that if you represent someone who is convicted, uh, it is important that the person who's convicted show genuine remorse. Um, and that's something that is traditionally taken into uh, account by courts when they sentence. And uh, frankly, Mr. Singleton uh, uh, is honest when he tells you that Tracy Hunter is unrepentant. She has no remorse for anything that has occurred here. And frankly, she continues to lash out. And I do find it somewhat ironic that it's said that Tracy Hunter no knows nothing about the cards that were sent to you, yet she is the very person who made those allegations to you, to your face, in a court hearing uh, some time ago. Um, and I would say that very few things have ever uh, affected me in court. And when she started on that rant, um, I cannot describe what I felt, uh, not only about the inappropriateness of it, the brazen disregard for respect and authority, but the, uh, frankly, what I thought was uh, uh, malicious and uh, vicious allegations to make uh, against you. Uh, or against any judge, um, and especially under the circumstances 
of the event that, that, that she wants to uh, that she wants to continue to rehash. Uh, <clears throat> Your Honor, uh, it's ironic also that uh, when Mr. Dieters wrote the letter asking you to um, at least order a mental health evaluation, and, and, and I endorsed it, I said, well, that's fine with me. It's somewhat ironic that the person who said that they did not want the mental health evaluation was Tracy Hunter herself. Now, anyone who has been in the system or around the system understands that when Mr. Dieters presumably is asking uh, for a mental health evaluation, uh, it uh, arguably would be uh, to see if there is some type of way uh, for Tracy Hunter to avoid a jail sentence if there is a mental health issue. Yet she is the one who stands here before you today and says that she um, um, doesn't want that either. In other words, what she wants is to control the facts. What she wants to do is write the law, and what she wants to do is play by her own set of rules right up until today, I mean, until, right up until this very moment. And that's the very attitude and the very conduct that put her in the predicament that she's in and, frankly, has caused all this pain to her and caused all this turmoil to the community. That said, um, the case correctly, as has been said, has been tried. A jury has convicted her. It's been through the uh, First District Court of Appeals. It's been through the Federal District Court. And the convictions have been affirmed at all times. She stands convicted. There is a sentence which was imposed by Judge Nadel. And uh, I think it's time to impose the sentence. Mr. Uh, Mr. Singleton, Ms. Uh, Branch, if uh, Ms. Hunter would like to say something. Obviously, she's more than welcome to say something at this point. It's up to you all. Just one moment. Yes, sir. I then in perform my duties as a judge and to assure complete and full due process that has been afforded to Ms. Hunter as it is to every defendant in this courtroom. I have reviewed the entire file, including the federal aspect and the pertinent law, and just a real quick review so there's a full understanding of where we are and how we got here. Uh, this obviously uh, was an investigation of things that allegedly were done improperly by Ms. Hunter in the juvenile court. Um, a special <coughs> prosecutor was appointed by the Common Police Court. They did an investigation. Matters were submitted to the grand jury. The grand jury returned a multi-count indictment. There was a jury trial conducted by Judge Nato. Twelve jurors, twelve peers of Ms. Hunter, found her guilty of one count of having an unlawful interest in a public contract, which was signed by all twelve jurors. The sentence was imposed by Judge Nato on December 5, 2014. He imposed that sentence, ordered Judge, uh, ordered Judge Nato, ordered Ms. Hunter to uh, to come to the Justice Center on the 29th of December 2014 to begin the sentence that was stayed by our First District Court of Appeals. On January 15, 2016, in a 3-0 decision, the uh, First District Court of Appeals affirmed the trial court, found that Ms. Hunter had received a fair trial. The Ohio Supreme Court, in an entry dated May 18, 2016, and I quote, declines to accept jurisdiction pursuant to Supreme Court Practice Rule 7.08b4. In other words, there was not enough there for the Ohio Supreme Court to even review the in-case. They didn't take it in. They lifted their stay. They said, go ahead, court, proceed with the execution of the sentence. The defendant then appealed, filed a habeas corpus in the federal court. Judge Black then stayed the execution of the sentence. After that, federal magistrate Judge Karen Likovitz reviewed the case. On May 9, 2017, she submitted a report and recommendation to Judge Black recommending that Hunter's petition for writ of habeas corpus be denied with prejudice. The defendant objected to that report, and on May 29, 2019, two years later, Judge Timothy S. Black, the United States District Judge, issued a decision, issued a decision. I think it is appropriate at this point to just I've read it, just share for the record a couple things. On page two, and I quote, early in these proceedings, Hunter's attorney stated, quote, regardless of whether this federal court 
ultimately agrees with Judge Hunter on the merits of her claims, this case presents an opportunity for the federal court to restore lost confidence in the justice system by giving Judge Hunter a fair opportunity to be heard in federal court, a venue that the community trusts as being above local politics before she is put in jail. Judge Black then says this federal court now discharges that duty with this decision. He goes on further on page 22 to say, the last paragraph, nevertheless, in summary as to this objection, the evidence at trial that Hunter had delivered to her brother documents to which he was not entitled for the purpose of protecting his employment as a juvenile correction officer at the Hamilton County Youth Center, as well as the testimony regarding Hunter's additional conduct intervening on her brother's behalf, and I quote, strongly supports the jury's verdict that Hunter was guilty of having an unlawful interest in a public contract. That's the federal judge saying this. The federal judge goes on further to say this strong evidence, I quote, strong evidence supporting the jury's verdict on count six undermines petitioner's claim that the verdict was a result of the inflammatory and prejudicial effect of remarks made by the special prosecutor during closing argument. On page 25, the federal judge, Judge Black, then says, conclusion, number one, the report and recommendation is adopted in its entirety. That is Magistrate uh, Blikovitz. Number two, petitioner's objections and respondent's objections are overruled. Skip three, four, petitioner's petition for writ of habeas corpus pursuant to 28 U.S.C. section 2254 is denied with prejudice and dismissed. Goes on in paragraph seven, the court's prior order granting petitioner's emergency motion for stay of execution of sentence is hereby set aside and vacated and eight, the court shall enter judgment accordingly, whereupon this case is terminated on the docket of this court, that is the federal court. And after that, because she's represented by very, very good lawyers, the lawyers then went to the Sixth Circuit Court of Appeals, where they filed for uh, a writ of habeas corpus. I'll just read part of the last, on the last page in their order, which was dated July 18, 2019, and I quote, Hunter has not demonstrated she is likely to succeed on the merits of her claim that she was denied a constitutionally fair trial as a result of the improper remarks by the prosecutor. Goes on to say she has not demonstrated she will suffer any additional irreparable harm in the absence of a stay. And the United States Supreme Court has noted, quote, the state's strong interest in enforcing its criminal judgments without due interference from federal courts. The interest of the state and the public in the finality and enforcement of judgments supports the denial of stay of pending appeal. Accordingly, the motion for stay pending appeal is denied. That's by the Sixth Circuit Court of Appeals. So with that, I've read it once. I'm not going to go through it again. Just to note, all the state courts have looked at this. Every one of them have said that Ms. Hunter received a fair trial. We went to the federal court. You can shake your head if you like. The federal courts also said she received a fair trial all the way up to the Sixth Circuit Court of Appeals. The only thing left is the Supreme Court, and I doubt that they're going to take, take it in. They all did their duty, and now it's my turn. To follow, the, follow my oath, uphold the rule of law. In this case, the law certainly permits it. Judge, I believe, I'm believe sorry. Justice, I'm sorry. I'm sorry to interrupt. Um, just one second. <coughs> That's not the front.
What are we doing here, Mr. Singleton? I'm oh, sorry, Judge. Um, Tracy, I gave her question. an opportunity to speak, and that was turned down. <laughs> it's not being offered now. Please have a seat. So you're denying my right as a defendant to address the court? Ma'am, please have a seat. I just want to make sure. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. So the record should reflect again. You were offered an opportunity to speak, and you turned that down. Please, everybody's been great. I appreciate that. It is a court of law. Thank you for that. And, um, as you all heard, she was offered an opportunity and turned that down. So, um, with that, um, in this case, I believe the law permits the execution of the sentence. And I believe, I know justice gets thrown around a lot, but I think justice menace in this particular case. So the court, Ms. Hunter, orders the execution of the sentence imposed on December 5th, 2014 by Judge Nadel. That is as follows. One year community control, that's non-reporting. Since you will be on community control, I will advise you, as I'm required to by law, that if you violate any of the conditions of the post of the uh, community control, come back in front of me. I will sentence you to 18 months to the Ohio Department of Corrections. It is a felony of the fourth degree. The conditions of the community control, control are real simple. As indicated in the judgment entry by Judge Nadel, number one, you pay the cost of these proceedings. Number two, you are to do not violate any laws. Number three, you are to do six months in the Hamilton County Justice Center. Credit one day. Uh, Mr. and Ms. Deputy can take her away. So done.